what would a recycling infrastructure of the 21st century look like in your opinion? Yeah. So I, I'm obviously biased. Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, one of the big pieces about recycling that's a challenge is there is just so, there are so many different materials and it makes recycling so difficult. <clears throat> and so as I look at, you know, recycling, I, one of the things that I, I see as the future is actually, um, this may sound crazy to say it, but less recycling. And what I see is more reuse. Um, so going back to the milkman and saying, hey, why are, you know, why are we buying a plastic bottle and then throwing that in the landfill and buying a new plastic bottle and throwing that in the landfill and buying a new plastic bottle when we could you know, have someone pick that up? We already have the, the, tr the garbage man's coming to your house and picking this up. Like, why is he not taking this to a facility to clean it and refill it and do that? instead of taking it to a place where we literally bury it in the ground, like what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Like what a, what a waste. Cause that, that's what it is. It's a waste. And in that, I think you're exactly right. And I think what we've been driving on, on Reapley's end is always um, really pushing the boundary of what is uh, cost spent on a, uh, on an item or resource that is of a diminishing return. Um, so something that depreciates versus then how do you rethink the service revenue? How do you rethink, you know, someone investing in an object, investing in a resource, but having that be um, serviced in some way to keep it at its highest life cycle? And I think in that in that respect, um, something as simple as a glass bottle can actually serve a household um, and can be and can be actually drive again um, revenue growth because you're building relationships then with households. <laughs>